Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for MBA. All these videos, they get posted on this subreddit. Hopefully I don't forget to reply to you. Um, um, post on the subreddit. I make updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day or anything you need. Luckily, no late swap tomorrow, so it should be fine. So I'll make all the updates when we do get news. Didn't really have to tonight because there was no late swap, right? Um, you can ask me questions about the site, anything you need, I'll have this link down below. And if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter right there. So let's take a look at my lineup from tonight. Sorry, guys, I have so many tabs open just because um, researching these slates does take a lot of time. Um, but let's get into my lineup from tonight. So um, good day overall. Um, lost on night slate, so it's going to be like about a break even day, but cash main slate. Uh, my core today, DeJounte Murray, he smashed. Keontae George, core play, he smashed. Um, Bones Highland, core play, he, he was a bit of a letdown. And then um, THT was core play as well. So THT, Keontae George, Bones Highland, and DeJounte Murray. Rather than my lineup with uh, Walker Kessler, I was stuck, man. I was really, really stuck at center. Um, didn't really know what to do there. Um, so I just, I, I, I didn't like it, but I really liked everything around him. So um, ended up playing Walker Kessler. Um, thought it was fine, really low owned. Um, it could have been an off chance he started too. So yeah, fine with it. Um, Simone, uh, he was he was lower owned than he was the slate prior because he had a really really bad game. Well, I wouldn't say it was because of the bad game, but um, position eligibility was a bit definitely a bit tough today. I think that had something to do with it. He was obviously still popular. Um, but I, I went right back. Um, he shot the ball just really, really bad. Um, finally, had a good shooting game tonight. So that was great. Paul George, Clippers were low owned. Didn't really understand that. He smashed. Loved that. And then, um, obviously, I had uh, Sexton. So, uh, yeah, uh, break even day because I didn't cash on night slate, but did cash on the main slate. And if you're looking for more in-depth content, DFS content, prize picks content, sportsbook content, um, I'll have my Discord link down below. We, we, we had a really good night in Discord tonight. We also had good days on prize picks. Um, so this was uh, the slip that we did, correlation slip. Jokic just doesn't play the fourth quarter um, to chalk the sixth man. So a uh, bit unfortunate there. But let's get into this late. Brooklyn and Indiana. So with this team fully healthy, it's going to be downgrades to pretty much everyone. But... There is a guy I do like here in GPPs, and that's Cam Thomas. Um, right now, they're kind of running him into the ground. 39 minutes last game. We know he's a guy that has a ceiling. It's a fast-paced matchup going up against the Pacers. So I do like Cam Thomas quite a bit for GPPs. I honestly think I prefer him to Mel Mikel Bridges right now. Um, I, I still think Mikel's solid just because the matchup's so good. The pace should be up. So I do like both the top two guys here, Mikel and Cam Thomas. Like I said, I think I give the edge to Cam Thomas right now. Claxton at 6.8K, just there for me. You know, Daron Sharpback does take a hit in his minutes slightly. He should still play around 30. He still has a ceiling, but uh, more of a contrarian play for me now. It doesn't make him out of play, but um, I haven't even looked at the center list on this slate. You have Vooch, who I absolutely love. Miles Turner, his minutes have kind of, kind of been up of late, but yeah, center looks pretty weak on this slate. So yeah, I don't mind Claxton. I think Vooch is Probably going to be Giga Chalk tomorrow, which I am fine with. Perfectly okay with. Um, Dennis Schroeder at 6.3K, just there for me. He takes a use of the with everyone back, but statue stuffer, very, very safe. I think he's priced right. Cam Johnson came off the bench last game. Don't think I'll be going there. I think Dorian Finney Smith is priced right. So, yeah, pretty unappealing team outside of the top two guys. I'm definitely pretty high on Cam Thomas in GPPs, and I think Mikel is solid. Moving on to the Pacers. So Halliburton, I mean, he's been continuing to play close to 40 minutes. Just the production has not been up to his earlier season standards. He's going unowned every single slate because of that. So, I mean, um, if you want to play, sorry, I was reading my mail. If you want to play with low ownership, I have no issue with it. One game, he's probably going to drop like a 20-20 game. Just absolutely nuke the slate at no ownership. It's just not the best matchup here going up against the Brooklyn Nets. The pace, Brooklyn, they play slow as well. So, like... Um, as far as spending, let's say you have SGA going up against Memphis, I think is good. Possibly Steph Curry up against the Lakers. Outside of that, there, I mean, there's not much. I mean, I like AD quite a bit. I think AD is one of the best spend ups on the slate. You have a lot of good mid range, but yeah, I think Cali's firmly, firmly in play. Siakam might be a bit more optimal, a bit easier to get to at that price point. Nice eligibility as well. He's been turning it on of late. Nice to see his minutes up of late. Earlier, he was only playing like low 30s minutes. 
Um, so nice to see he did get 36 minutes last game. So I think Siakam's fine. Definitely uh, would prefer. I'd honestly prefer like Siakam to the kill produce right now. Um, so and then Miles Turner, he did play a decent amount last game. Do want to check if Jalen Smith got into foul trouble? Yeah, that's probably why uh, Miles Turner played a bit more. Um, but normally he's going to play around 30 minutes. He's kind of the similar to like Claxton has a ceiling. I think Claxton's probably in the better spot, but fine option, fine contrarian play for me at 6.5k. Basically almost identical to like Claxton, like I said. Matherin's out, so you're going to see huge minutes for Neesmith. Smith. I think he's very, very safe. Solid rebounder, can put the ball in the basket. Probably going to chuck 10 plus shots. Very, very safe. Um, no real strong takes here with Neesmith, Smith, but fine. It's like a last piece in for me. I'm not going to play guys like Nemhard. I mean, TJ McConnell has continued to just smash, and he's playing around 20 minutes, so 4.5k. I actually do think that's solid for value. Um, if you do need to punt, Jalen Smith, look at the back of five. He's reasonable. I don't know if I go to anyone else here, though. All right, moving on to Charlotte, going up against the Sixers. One thing to know, um, Terrence Mann is back. It's back-to-back. -back. I haven't seen anything I would expect him to be in. I believe, I don't think they have the stats up, but I believe, uh, did I say Terrence Mann? Sorry, Trey Mann. I believe he played like 40, 35 minutes tonight, 36 minutes tonight for Trey Mann. Uh, Mitch is 31, uh, Nick Richards is normal 28, Brandon Miller probably got into foul trouble. I don't think they have it up. Um, but yeah, um, don't mind the spot here going up against the Sixers. I think both the guards look fine. Um, if everyone's just going to click Trey Mann because he had the bigger game tonight, played more minutes, they'd rather just play like a Mitchich. Mitchich will, Mitchich will have the ball in his hands a bit more, but I think both are fine options. Not really standouts, but both, you know, decent contrarian options if you need to go there. Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, I think are solid. Miles Bridges, Brandon Miller, normally in competitive games, you're going to play close to 40 minutes. They're the one-two punch for Charlotte. Um, I prefer Miles to Brandon Miller. And then Nick Richards with um, man back is going to see a downtick in minutes because Grant Williams will play a bit more off of the bench. And then Grant Williams will play around 30 minutes off the bench. Bad eligibility with center only, so it's kind of tough for me to go there. Berton, so thank you. I mean, Poku's in the rotation. If you do need a dart, it's fine. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, if for some reason man's out, then yeah, I really like Mitchich. Um, the main guys don't change. Then Nick Richards gets a slight bump of minutes. Then I would like Grant Williams at 5.2K. And then Berton's would be a solid value. If for some reason they do rest him on a back-to-back. All right, moving on to the Sixers. Tobias Harris is questionable. I assume if he's out, they'll just probably move like a Batum in the starting lineup. But with that being said, I absolutely love Tyrese Maxey at this price point going up against Charlotte. He's one of my favorite mid-range plays in the slate. I love, love, love Tyrese Maxey on this slate. Tobias Harris is priced right. Everyone else, if with everyone healthy, don't love too much here. I think everyone else is priced right. Paul Reed continues to see high 20s minutes off of the bench. I think he's decent value now that he's down to 5.3k. Good point per minute guy, good defender, can get block steals. Really like the matchup going up against Charlotte. He has nice eligibility as well, has power forward eligibility. So Paul Reed is definitely a guy I'm pretty, pretty high on here um, for GPP, especially if he's going to be low owned tomorrow. Kyle Lowry at 4.7, production's been up, it's been down. Reasonable value campaign should see minutes off the bench. And uh, yeah. If Tobias Harris is out, they'll start like a Batum. Batum would be playable. And then the, then we can get to some more options here. Then I would absolutely love Tyrese Maxey. Then Ubre, I think Ubre is solid regardless, but then Ubre would look very, very good. But he'll be firmly in play. Paul Reed is still out. Really, really like in GPPs. Kyle Lowry will see a bump. So, yeah, um, there would definitely be a lot more to like here if Tobias Harris is, um, in fact, out. Moving on to Portland. Not the best matchup here going up against the Pelicans, but we do have Simons back. We have Jeremy Grant doubtful, and we have Jabari Walker doubtful. So it's going to be a similar rotation to what they did on the 13th. I want to say I have it up here. I do. Oh, no, that's Washington. I guess let me find it. Yeah, right here. Simons played 42 minutes in this game. Tumani Kamara played 30 minutes in this game. They started Banton in this game because Scoot was on a limit. I guess keep an eye on if they're going to start, start Scoot or Ban. Aiton's playing huge, huge minutes, and then Chris Murray um, continues to start, continues to play around 30 minutes. So, with that being said, I mean, if you want to play Aiden, I'm not going to say no. He's been on an absolute another level of late. He's been playing 40 minutes a game, um, going up against the likes of like Jonas Valanciunas, Larry Nance. I don't mind the spot. So, yeah, I'm not going to say no. Like, 
Vucevic is probably going to be one of the most popular center plays on the slate. If you want to pivot in GPPs, I think that's completely fine. Simons, I like quite a bit. Now, not the best matchup here going up against the Pelicans, but pretty much has the entire team to himself. With Jeremy Grant out in competitive games, he's going to play close to 40 minutes. Just very, 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 very safe. Now, if they do start scooting, he's not on a limit. I actually like him. If they start like a band, you can go to ban. But with like all three guards healthy, it's definitely a downgrade to uh, both scoot and ban. But just keep an eye on the starting lineup. And then Kamara, Chris Murray, they're both playable. Um, for some reason, they're dusting off Ashton Higgins over Scoot. I, I did, don't understand that. Moving on to the Pelicans. One thing to note here is Jonas Valanciunas' minutes have been on a downtrend of late. They're playing a lot more Larry Nance. So, I mean, if you continue to see a bit more Larry Nance, I do think he's a solid value of 4.1K. He played a decent chunk tonight, I want to say. But if you think, for some reason, Jonas Valanciunas gets his, like, 20-plus minutes, he could absolutely nuke the slate at this price point. So... Um, I think Nance is probably a bit better just because he's cheaper and he's playing more minutes right now. But if you think Jonas, for some reason, or like Larry Nance gets into foul trouble and Jonas gets extended, one of these guys is probably going to smash tomorrow in this matchup up against Portland. Just such a good spot for bigs. So um, I think they're both firmly, firmly in play. I think Nance is a bit better point per dollar, though, a bit safer, been playing more of late. And then I like all three of the main guys, C.D. McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion uh, Williams. As long as Portland keeps this game competitive, probably two or three of these guys is probably going to have a really big game. I believe C.J. had a pretty big game tonight. I know Zion did, um, but yeah, I think all three look like solid options. Trey Murphy's overpriced, Herb Jones, no thank you. And yeah, I'm intrigued by both the bigs here. Najee Marshall see a run off the bench, but I don't think I will go there. Moving on to OKC, good spot here going up against Memphis. I mean, SGA going to be a top spend up on the slate. We don't have too many options, so yeah, I like him. Chet Holmgren at 7-4, Jalen Williams, they're all just like kind of similar to me. Not priorities, but fine filler plays to me. I think I prefer probably Jalen at 6.9K compared to Chet at 7.4K. Giddy at 5'8 is priced right. She'll play low 20s minutes. He does have a ceiling. I mean, his production this year has been really, really solid, but the minutes upside just isn't really there. Lou Dort's playable. I don't know if I go to much else, though. I don't think I can click on any of that bench value. All right, looks like Desmond Bean is going to be back. So, like, it, it's, I'm so thankful. It just hurts everyone. It basically makes this team kind of disgusting for me. I would expect Bain, he could come off the bench, I guess. He's been out for so long, some type of limit. I would imagine he would be on some type of limit and probably, I guess, could come off the bench. I, I really don't know. Um, but just keep an eye on it, I guess. If they start, if they continue to start like a Pippin, um, sure. Um, keep an eye on the inactives. They're, they're trolling with the inactives. Some games people will be active. Some games others will be inactive. So like, Keep an eye on that. If they start like a Pippin, you can go there. With Bane back, it hurts Vince. It hurts Jaron. It hurts pretty much everyone. It's like, it's really tough to say right now. I will make updates on Reddit. But yeah, very, very unappealing with uh, Desmond Bane back. And this is a team where just they could do a number of things here. So, um, all right. We have Rashawn Holmes. He is questionable. We have Tyce Jones. He is doubtful. And we have Denny Abdija. He is questionable. So if they're both out... What are they going to do with this starting lineup? So, like, when I was looking over the slate, I had two options that I think they could do here. First off, they could do, I guess, Jordan Poole, Blau Koulibaly, Corey Kispert, Kyle Kuzma, and then one of the bigs, one of Rashawn Holmes, Eugene Amorier. As if, if, like, Holmes is out, they could start Eugene. If Holmes is in, they could start Holmes. Or they could just start... Jared Butler, I guess, and do like Butler, Pool, Kobale, Kispert, Kuzma, I guess. Has Johnny Davis been getting some run? I mean, could even insert like a Johnny Davis into the starting line. They could do a number of things here. Um, but if they're both out, I mean, Kyle Kuzma is, looks good. He's going to have to do everything for this team. I'd like pull at 6.2K. Kispert, he'd have to play like 40, 50 minutes. Um, I, I'm joking there, but probably close to 40 minutes. Uh, he would look good at 5.5K. Cool. Bali's going to have to do a lot more. He'd be a solid value. If they start one of the bigs and Rashawn Holmes, Eugene Amore, whoever's in, whoever's out, I'd like whoever starts. Um, you would think Johnny Davis would probably have to get a bit more run. It's like, 
Um, Butler's probably going to have to play a bit more, even if he starts or comes off the bench. I think off the bench is probably more likely, but we'll see. But there'll be a lot to like here, even in a bad matchup going up against Chicago. And then if Denny's in, um, we'll see. Uh, Kispert's decent. Cool Bale's fine. Jordan Poole's still solid. Kuzma going to have to do a lot more offensively. And I think that's it. And then Butler probably going to have to play a bit more. It's really just going to be a wait and see, kind of see who's available, what they do with starting lineups. I think there's like three different starting lineups they could go with tomorrow. And then we get to one of the best teams to target on the slate, in my opinion, and that is Chicago. Phenomenal matchup here going up against Washington. I absolutely love Nikola Vucevic at 8.4K. He should be able to dominate with whoever they put up on him, whether it's, you know, like a Kyle Kuzma, Rashawn Holmes, Eugene Amorier, depending on who's in out, he should be able to feast here. So yeah, I think Vooch looks like one of the best center options on the slate. Absolutely love him. I really like DeMar DeRozan. By the way, Kobe White is doubtful. Forgot to mention that. I would assume we're very solid. Alex Crusoe, very solid. Tori Craig, I think, stands out as a really solid value. So there's just a ton to like here. Um, made up name, Bidum, has been getting run. I have no idea who that is. Um, so yeah, they're running, they're running really tight rotation. I don't think they're going to need more Andre Drumming going up against this Washington team. So I don't think he changes too much, but... Um, yeah, definitely a lot to like there with uh, Chicago. And then we got to keep an eye on uh, the Warriors. So if Steph plays and he's not on the limit, I love him up against the Lakers at this price point. Let's keep an eye on that. And then if Draymond's in, uh, it's going to be downgrades to everyone. Don't, it would mainly just be like Steph for me, probably, um, on the Warriors in a good spot. Interesting Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins as well. And then if they're both out again, I like Kaminga quite a bit going up against the Lakers. Um, 35 minutes last game with both out. I'm really high on him once again in GPPs if they're both out. Chris Paul, I think it's a really solid play if they're both out. Um, Trace Jackson Davis started last game, played 25 minutes. Firmly in play, but not as good of a play now that he's priced up. Wiggins, solid value of 5.2K. Um, has GP2 been back? I guess I didn't notice that, but... Yeah, it would be a good amount to like here if they're both out in this good spot going up against the Lakers. And then if they're both in, like I said, I'd like Steph quite a bit as long as he's not on the limit. Still interesting, Kaminga. Chris Paul would be priced right. Draymond would be overpriced. Clay would be overpriced. Pods would be overpriced. Um, wouldn't play Trace. Still would have interest in Wiggins, but yeah, it would be a lot more trickier. Moving on to the Lakers. I think Anthony Davis is probably one of the best spend ups on the slate. He should be able to feast with it, whoever they put up on them. So. Really like it either. LeBron will be your pivot in tournaments. I think Anthony Davis will be a bit more popular tomorrow, and I really don't like too much else. I think D'Lo Reeves, they're both priced right. Rui at 5-4. I mean, the minutes have been there, but I think the price is right. Didn't want to know thank you. So I think that's going to wrap it up. I hope you guys had a great night tonight, and I will talk to you all in the next video.